Welcome to Twisted Monday, where we're going to show off the PS4 version of Twisted Metal 2. I think I've done this before, but it's been a while, and there's definitely some stuff that I could have showed off last time. For example, this map option has been here. This is not a PS4 exclusive. You can just turn off the world map between levels, thereby saving about two or three seconds per load, which actually adds up to a significant time save, and I never even knew that, even in all my attempts to speedrun this game. I gotta give speedrunning another chance, because uh, that is basically a guaranteed PB if I can get on a halfway decent run. Which is no guarantee. But we're not speedrunning today. Today we are doing something that I meant to do a while ago. And playing through the PS1 emulated version on PS4 as bonus character Sweet Tooth, which is quite a challenge because you don't get any um, passwords. So you have three lives to complete the entire game. I'm confident in my skills, especially with the addition of saves and rewinds. Speaking of which... Let's throw down a save right now. Put a little pin in that. For now, we need to unlock Sweet Tooth. Because he's not here. He failed sh to show up to this year's competition. Cowardly. But if we press up, L1, triangle, right... He made it. There's our guy. His character art is surprisingly pixelated. You really get to see how low quality all the, uh, the textures and stuff are here on the PS4 version. Which is weird because the PS1 version actually looks very clean and smooth. Somehow slightly more so than this version, I tend to find. This is where Sweet Tooth gains his iconic flaming head. Oh, the map is on. That's fine. We intend to load back to the... Um, The options menu briefly here. Because we have here in LA is one of the few changes they made. They changed these. Health pickups could no longer be little plus signs because those are copyrighted by the Red Cross. A humanitarian aid organization had nothing better to do with their time than bother PlayStation about a 1996 video game having a similar shaped health icon as to their iconic icon. And that's not all. You might have already noticed. Los Angeles, not Hollywood. There is no iconic Los Angeles sign as far as I know. And there won't be another one if I get lucky and don't get smashed by Mr. Slam. All the enemies have found me, so it's not going to be easy to blow up this sign. There it goes. Doesn't take much damage, at least. They changed all the little art of the various letters flying off the sign. That is also a thing that is not specifically copyrighted, but if you're going to put the Hollywood sign in um, material that is going to be sold, you do have to pay a fee most of the time. The city of Los Angeles will track you down and destroy you. And they finally did that for Twisted Metal 2. So that's a bit of a shame, what they did to this version of the game. 
but Twisted Metal 2 decided to really go to town and cover all their bases. Here in the story cutscene, they also changed the Hollywood sign to the Los Angeles sign. So in this universe, there is no Hollywood sign. It's just the, the LA sign. I thought that was a good little touch, the way they redrew it like that. But unfortunately, this cutscene is hideous to behold. And yeah, I turned the map on. We want it off. Now we're ready. Once we get into the game this time, we will stay there. And no map. Straight to the vehicles. It's like I planned to do it this way all along. I didn't. But it worked out well. I showed off what it's like to have the map and what it's like not to. While we're here, and speaking of plans, Twisted Marathon. Coming up this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That's going to be every single game back to back to back. All nine of them. As it is my opinion that there are nine games because I count Twisted Metal Lost. It was meant to happen uh, Christmas Eve. Turns out the holidays are a bit busy. So I was unable to do it that, at that time. Granted, it's always busy for me. I missed uh, last Twisted Monday because I had jury duty, which ended up lasting nine hours and nothing happened. I wasn't even called in to be considered for the jury. Not that I would have gotten picked anyway. But a absolute waste of time. And it completely ruined my Monday. This Monday, however, we get to have some fun with Twisted Metal. And while we're here, I did finally. There we go. It's not the Marathon anymore because it's no longer Christmas Eve. It's the Twisted Marathon. It's official. Has its own logo, even. I hope I have cropped it properly to minimize odds of this video getting demonetized and banned from YouTube. Thank you, Mara from uh, Shin Megami Tensei. An evergreen reference. Grasshopper is being annoying. I don't think I've ever done a full playthrough with Grasshopper. Well, I must have, because I did every character. So, I suppose I did. And I suppose it was disastrous. So much so that I blocked it out. Thus far, I have pretty much only fired my special. Because the thing that makes Sweet 2 so good is the special regenerates very, very, very frequently. It's actually kind of silly how many specials you get as Sweet Tooth. And they do a lot of damage. They home in extremely well. It is an extremely reliable tool. But they are pretty slow. You've got to get relatively close to your target if you want a chance to hit them. For some reason, Grasshopper swerved away in the middle of the special. Lucky for me. Because I prefer not getting hit with that thing over and over again. And she will spam it. 
And yeehaw spam. Seen plenty of it already. We'll probably see plenty more. Sweet Tooth is a sitting duck. We can't really dodge anything. Mobility is our greatest weakness. Though we are by no means the least mobile vehicle in this game. Sweet Tooth is pretty much explicitly overpowered, which is why he's locked down. Yep, did not mean to use Napalm. Still worked out in the end. Bit of a party going on over here. Which should leave both enemies. Oh, they, they freed themselves from one another. Disentangled. A very unfortunate time for me. This level we learned in the speedrun tends to be crucial and abnormally slow compared to a lot of the other levels. So we just do what we can to get it over with as quickly as possible. Not a lot of strategy to it. That's it's blatantly false. This is where you need to have the most strategy. Because it's not going to really be taken care of that easily. That was a very easily preventable mistake, though. Simply do not run in front of uh, Thumper and then stop. That's not even a speedrun strat. Thankfully, Thumper did not end up putting up much of a fight. We're going to need... Bunch of weapons before we move on, though. The next level has woefully inefficient and insufficient weapon pickups for us. In particular, we definitely need these remote bombs so that we can blow up the entirety of the next level. I've really gotten into the habit of doing that because I find it makes the speed run easier. And the last time I played this game was for the purposes of speedrunning. Took down the generator in such a way as to generate way too many ricochets. But those can be pretty useful in the next level. Should have him under control now. He should not be able to move under his own volition. So close. Machine gun did it. Apparently the machine gun in this game is one of the best in the entire series. And it has infinite ammo, so I may as well just hold it down pretty much the entire run. I need all the damage I can get. We're now on to Moscow, which should fly by. I didn't see anyone particularly threatening, even. Oh, Twister's here. Twister is the most potentially threatening enemy you can get on this level. Besides maybe Axel. Grim, tragically, will be crushed underfoot every time we see him. Starting to feel bad for the little guy. There was actually an update about the Twisted Metal video game, which I mentioned last time had not been mentioned in quite a while. We hadn't really heard anything about it for almost the entirety of 2023. 
finally they announced that it is officially canceled. There will be no new Twisted Metal video game in the near future. Because we, we can't have good news. But we can have news at least. It's weird, the the um, article that I read, it said that what they were canceling was an unannounced Twisted Metal game. But of course, the one that I'm familiar with had been announced. I was well aware of it. So it's possible that this is a different game and they they like already had canceled the other one. But basically, Sony went through a bunch of layoffs. All of their first and second party studios are debilitated at the moment. And they'll be making basically no new games, which is fantastic. The entire console generation has 12 exclusive games. And it's coming to an end, and it doesn't look like they're going to make any new exclusive games. Excellent work, Sony. Where did Roadkill get behind me again? On the bright side, that means we know exactly what the Twisted Marathon consists of. They're not going to slip any new games in under the wire and make me have to reroute the entire marathon at the last moment. Okay, all that's left is the actually dangerous enemy. I suppose if I get caught by her, I could just uh, load or uh, rewind a little bit, but that didn't end up being necessary. A beautiful run of Moscow. Even ended on the Sweet to the Rules of the World billboard. Mildly on fire. Because we cannot um, reload our lives in any way, we basically cannot afford to die. Ever. So if I die, I have to do various shenanigans to undo that death. Which is obnoxious. I did do a Sweet Tooth run before, because like I said, I've done every character in this game. But that was on the PC version, and I blatantly cheated to set up safety saves. Which I needed. Uh-oh. Yeah, I can't have that. Probably right about here. Probably should not have blown myself up with a remote bomb. We gotta get rid of Slam. Yeah, health refills are very, very limited in this particular level. Time for old reliable. That's special. Oh, wow. Seems as though Mr. Slam outpaced me. Caught up to where I was. There we go. Not gonna happen this time. And I'm surprised Axel did not unleash 10 consecutive specials at the exact same time. So as to instantly obliterate me. Surprised and fortunate. But I'm getting gradually less fortunate. Pulling up the Eiffel Tower. 
tends to be a pretty good idea in the speedrun, but not the best idea here. Sweet Tooth cannot really take advantage of it. One down. Shadow didn't even get to make a scream. The silent scream of Shadow. The name of my teenage goth poetry. Should probably finish off Hammerhead so he doesn't cause any problems. Probably find him first. And there he goes. Now things are going pretty smoothly. Can't complain about much of anything since Mr. Slam died. He was the one obstacle here. Okay, Outlaw is still on the rooftops. Perhaps now would be a good time to take down the Eiffel Tower. Unfortunately, I'm all out of remote bombs with which to do that. So I might just have to do some platforming. I don't think we ever saw it on the PC version, but... Vehicles uh, in this level in particular can get caught underground and stuff. Specifically on the PC version. I've never seen it happen on the PS1 version in any of the various emulations I've tried. This is a bit of an ugly game, but it is quite solidly built. It is not likely to break down on you. Oh, I'm too close to Outlaw. Far, far too close. There's our remote bomb. Outlaw's gonna stay in there. All I gotta do is stay out of range of the taser. And she is utterly helpless. Just exchange fire and what's she gonna do about it? Yeah, all I had to do was reset my strategies a few times, and that was also quite simple. Honestly, with how much I've put into Twisted Metal 2, I should be playing on hard mode. But I'm nonetheless rather bad at this game, relative to how I am at all the other games. If I were to do this on hard mode, and someday I will. It would be quite catastrophic. Even with all the tools at my disposal. This is a level where I tend to find... That aggression and actively seeking out enemies tends to not go my way. On the bright side, uh, Twister here ran right through the lava, set herself up for a nice easy kill. I should have stuck with things that had knockback. I could have kept Hammerhead in the lava. Oh well. Thumper's here. Thumper has also melted himself for some reason. You'd think he'd be relatively fireproof, but no. At least we have some Twisted Metal on the horizon. 
That new season should be out later this year. Although last I heard, they hadn't even started filming yet. That was about a month ago. Seems like they only got picked up after the strike. So there would have been no writing prepared. Just the basic gist that they had set up at the end of the last season. Ah. Remote bombs. They pair very nicely with shields. I should probably have saved some for the minion part of the fight. Because they will take him out very quickly. There is still one in the temple over there. Perhaps I'll go for that. Spectre not happy with the way that I'm mistreating Mr. Grimm. Some tiny car solidarity going on here. Enough of these Hot Wheels. Get out of here. Vector did run away, though. It can't realistically beat me, but it can annoy me. It is outmaneuvering basically forever. Yep. I have no chance of ever hitting Spectre with anything on the uneven steps. Oddly enough, it seems to be eating my inputs every time I do a uh, shield combo. Like, the shield combo is going off just fine, but then I'm trying to fire weapons while I'm doing the shield combo. Maybe that's been one of the issues with why I can never get my combos to go off properly. It reads attack inputs as part of the combo, which would make sense because there is a combo that involves the attack input, the rear fire combo. Now these are just theories that I'm still formulating after so much time playing this game still has mysteries that have been solved by other people but are still not instinctual to me. I think power missiles should do the job. Need a clean shot. Beautiful. I did not end up getting any of the remote bombs that I wanted to get. There's one now. And I didn't get it. Master strategist today. Okay, it dumped me right where I can get some. Beautiful. Pretty sure even three robot bombs will not kill Minion outright. They'll leave a mark. And I don't get the third one for some reason. Perhaps Minion stole it. He was coming from that direction. Wouldn't put it past him to just grief me like that. Battle of the Secret Characters. It's almost funny how much weaker he is than he was in Twisted Metal 1. He's still very powerful, but that is a hilarious degree of nerf.
Honestly, it would have been cool if he did have, like, the acid attack. Which is in this game's files. Because Grasshopper was supposed to originally be Pit Viper again. They just changed their minds. And thus, the acid attack is in her sprite sheet. And in fact, I have a emote for that acid attack. And it's the one from Twisted Metal 2. It's slightly different from the one in Twisted Metal 1. Has a bit of a vomity texture on it. Haha, -ha, good timing. I was actually going to show off that I can use the rewind so that I don't have to time anything perfectly. I could just, you know, wait for someone to cross by. And if I miss the timing, I can rewind a step. Try again the next time. But I nailed it in one go. So I had absolutely no need to out myself as the save scummer that I truly am. But will I be able to do it twice? No, not even close. Got them both. Two for one. <laughs> that was well worth reloading. Well, this is about my most efficient New York level ever. Clearly what I need to do in the speedrun is bring ricochets with me. And bounce some people over the edge. I'm certainly a lot better than that, better at that than I am at fighting them. Spectre can just outrun my specials. How obnoxious of you. Upper is right behind me. Doesn't matter how well you're doing. Upper can one-shot just about anybody. But he's not going to at this point. Just drive right into his fire. I don't care at this point. I win. Yeah, this isn't a speed run, but that sure went fast. Sweet Tooth is very, very good, and now I have the trick where I can rewind misses and use my ricochets to basically guarantee knockoff kills. Ooh, that's right, I can do some knockoff kills here as well. And I was going to go grind ricochets, but I still have eight of them. I am all set. This time it's all about positioning. Right about here. I believe the ricochet has to travel a certain distance before it has enough knockback. Like it builds knockback as it moves or something. Basically, I've tried a bunch of different positionings to get knockoffs from this particular teleporter, and sometimes they just don't work. And sometimes the enemies just do not arrive. I should probably start by fighting a few of them. And then being prepared when they actually do arrive. That ought to be fatal. There they go. All of them decided to show up at once. How nice of them. Thankfully, the teleporter can only have one enemy on it at a time. And thus, you can only get like a very specific flow of enemies in through the teleporter. 
which happens to be roughly the exact rate of fire of the ricochets. So they cannot overwhelm you. Under normal circumstances. This game does have its idiosyncrasies. Wouldn't be terribly surprised if multiple enemies just showed up at the same time through the teleporter. Definitely gave myself a bit of a head start there by killing four enemies without combat. And yeah, these are classic speedrun strats. Not always the best choice in a speedrun because it relies on enemy AI. Sometimes you have to be much more proactive if you want to not ruin your run this late into it. The upcoming marathon is effectively going to be a speedrun. And as far as anyone knows, it is the first ever full series speedrun. Because the last time I did a marathon, it definitely would not have counted as a speedrun. Took 13 and a half hours. In theory, this upcoming marathon could take half that. In practice, almost certainly not, but it will be faster than 13 and a half hours. I can guarantee that much. Famous last words. I should not guarantee anything at this point. Oh, someone fell off. I was going to go over to Grim. Now I think I need to wait for him to come to me. Because I don't trust the layout of the level anymore. But as noted, Grim is almost completely harmless. Unless he hits me with an infinite freeze combo. There was definitely a risk of that. Second to last level. Still haven't canonically lost any lives. But this is the big one. If I lose life here, I will probably just let it ride. If I lose two, I will certainly not let it ride. I got dealt some good enemies, and then I remote bombed myself. Let's get this remote bomb prepared. Just throw it away. I don't want to accidentally remote bomb myself again. game controls beautifully. It is a very, very good emulation. And honestly, being compatible with modern controllers goes a long way. That's what I like to hear. Multiple axle powers stacked on top of each other. The way a player cannot conceivably actually do. Seems like all the small enemies have been uh, pretty badly beaten up. Ah, missed time by Napalm. I kind of needed that to work out. Especially because the full health has been removed from the game.
I wonder if the windmill blades were actually physically hitting me there. And thus keeping me in place. Ooh, that's bad. That's also bad. One enemy down. No HP remaining. But the rest should drop like flies. And afford that. Very, very wasteful with my extremely limited ammo. Didn't even realize Outlaw was here. And almost completely unharmed at that. Yeah, I don't see any way of getting through this without losing a life at this point. See? I'm going to try to go a little longer, but I have no plan. Really want to use up some more of this ammo. Thank you, special. Going right between all the enemies. Mm. Probably the best I could hope for right now. Let it ride. That was not worth it. Especially because I could have just shielded. That's more like it. Hmm. I suppose getting in melee range with Axel is not the best plan in the world. Strangely, culling the enemies seems to have left me in a less control over what they're doing. With disastrous results. Um, I think I want to go all the way back here, even. A little further. Ugh. Axel's right behind me. Why did no one tell me? There we go. Now there's literally nothing to worry about. Besides Outlaw and Thumper. And Warthog. But not Spectre, at least. Spectre's pretty harmless. And I could do that with less damage. If I cheat. Uh-oh. Spectre's gonna finish me off any second now. There's a health refill over at the other corner of the map. And I make it. Surprisingly, yes.
now the one down. Shielded at the exact perfect moment. I don't even know what exactly hit me, but it was pretty brutal. Okay. Should not be on fire. Still drove directly through the fire. Let's see. And I avoid the fire. Looks like I got this. Beautiful. I was never worried. Just cost one life. Now I've got one to spare, and I probably won't be able to kill Darktooth without dying, so I should definitely save it for the final boss. If nothing else, it'll make my life way, way easier. Sweet Tooth does take up a lot of screen real estate, which makes even seeing what you're doing a little difficult. Oh, infinite freeze. Busting on out of that. That was rude. And it continues to be rude. Rear fired boomerangs. Outlaw to the rescue. Precisely what I don't want. A lot of the times Outlaw will swoop in to try and save somebody, and then just start firing the taser, and the taser will home in on the person she's trying to save. Not lucky enough to have that happen this time, though. Vector should probably be a priority target. Considering he can hit me from any distance. He tends not to take advantage of that. But eventually he's going to figure out that he can just snipe me from anywhere. Uh-oh. I'm right next to the kill plane. Doing some barrel rolls involuntarily. My confidence has perceptibly dipped. Holland will do that to you every single time. try and land this special. Knowing now that Grasshopper is immediately going to try and get behind me. The thing about the Sweet Tooth special is that it does bounce you upwards and kill all your momentum, which basically sets you up for infinite consecutive specials. You almost always have a lot of them on hand. Just 
Sweet Tooth is overpowered. Beautiful. Infinite Freeze, that would be less beautiful. Okay, not infinite. Just excruciatingly long. Not a turbo, which means I probably should not be driving towards two very dangerous foes. It also means I cannot get the um, full health refill. Unless I grab more turbo. Or jump very carefully. No thank you. This is not a platformer. I think I killed Spectre, yeah. Yeah, I remember Spectre exploding. So I have very little to worry about up here. I have gotten frozen by Mr. Slam. And I think Outlaw Special can technically reach up here. But otherwise, Sweet Tooth is the only one who really bothers to snipe you while you're up here. Twister certainly ain't gonna get me. Not until I am down on her level. There she goes. I think right there, Mr. Slam launched a ricochet bomb. And then right as I was about to finish him off, the ricochet bomb bounced off the wall and hit me. And threw off my aim. Good plan on his part. Honestly, ricochet bombs inside the temple are always a good idea. Because they're going to hit something eventually. That was not a great plan. Ah, oh, the number of times I've remote bombed myself this run. Okay, hey, we're doing pretty good. Rude. Just trying to go out the door. You don't even need ricochet bombs. Your special is a ricochet bomb that you can control. A bit of a costly finish. I think I still got the resources to take down Twister. Definitely have the resources. Even if I just have to crush her. And now I have literally nothing. Or Darktooth. Ironically, Darktooth is going to kill his little clown boy. And then he'll have to get revenge on himself. He's gonna have to dig two graves. Okay, they did give me some free specials at least. Wonder what would happen if Darktooth got bounced over one of these fences. I have to assume he would also slowly lose his health until he died. Same as any other vehicle. I've certainly never seen that happen.
Well, he gave up on me. Hmm. Don't care for that. Let's go quite a ways back. Oh, sometimes in this level you can get a glitch where Sweet Tooth's um, special will have the spiral pattern that hits almost nothing. Thankfully that glitch has not occurred. I do not need any disadvantages right now. Because I did not set myself up for a success. R2 is being a bit lazy. Like he doesn't want to kill me or something. He knows it runs counter to his very goals. Maybe I should prioritize the remote bombs. That seems to have been the better choice, because he's almost dead. Yeah, that was definitely the better choice. I even taught myself earlier in the run. Use your remote bombs. Just throw down a shield. Detonate the entire screen. You will rarely regret it. Whereabouts is that severed head, though? And the separate head has no HP. So, that's a nice, successful run. Pretty simple. Let's enjoy this rarely seen ending. Rarely seen by me, at least. Sweet Tooth, winner of the Twisted Metal Contest, was granted an audience with the founder of the competition. I had agreed to grant the winner any prize they requested. There would be no limits on price, size, or in this case, even reality. Sweet Tooth told me he wanted to live out his greatest fantasy, to become a bug in a tiny little garden out in the country. It would be a life of relaxation and love, a life of peace, a final escape from his madness. The night sky exploded with light. And when the light faded, Sweet Tooth had gotten his wish. For the rest of his days, he enjoyed his new life in the garden, away from all those who would tell him he was crazy. The other insects were not fans of their new neighbor, for he had a tendency to kill them. Oh, but Sweet Tooth was happy, and whenever he got lonely for human companionship, or for human flesh, all he had to do was look up and dream of the day when he would crawl out of the garden and back into the world of man. Oh, I am Calypso, and I thank you for playing Twisted Metal. I never caught before that... Price, size, or even reality is a quote from Twisted Metal 1 about uh, the stipulations of the prize you can win by winning Twisted Metal. That's a cute little touch. And I definitely want a sequel to that story, where Sweet Tooth as a bug now drives a vehicle so as to win Twisted Metal again so as to become a human. And the cycle continues forever and ever and ever. That's the Twisted Metal sequel that I want, and was deprived of in Head On. First time I've been disappointed by Sweet Tooth's story in Head On, which is otherwise excellent. But it has nothing to do with bugs, so it loses out as a comparison to this particular game's story. But yeah, fun character. Fun run. 
I need to do a lot of Twisted Metal 2 practice because it's still pretty much my worst game in the entire series. And now I know I can turn off the map. But yeah, that is success. Our mascot has beaten the game. So that's going to be it for Twisted Metal, but... After a short break, wherein I will go get some water, we'll check out a different game. And that was a little clue to the fact that we will be playing Dead in the Water, the Twisted Metal ripoff game, where you're in, like, a boat fighting people, and it isn't critical depth. So... <laughs> That's going to be weird. Stay tuned. We'll check that out in just a moment. But that is it for Sweet Tooth. I am Fiendly, and I thank you for watching Twisted Monday.